All right, smile. There you go. Nice. So today we are out. Uh, we're going to take a hyperlapse, and essentially what that means is we have the camera and we have the subject, and what we're going to do is we are going to take a picture and move the camera um, while the subject also moves in this case along with the camera. Check out what this will look like. So for those of you who don't know, we need to make the distinction between a time lapse and a hyperlapse. So for a time lapse, you, the camera, is going to remain stationary. And let's say your background is some mountains here. You are going to stand still with your camera and you're going to take a series of pictures with the mountains here in the same exact location in every frame. So the goal of a time lapse is to get the movement of maybe the clouds moving across the mountains or maybe some people moving in front of the mountains. And you're going to piece together these images to create movement in front or above or behind your subject, which is the mountains, over a period of time. So the goal of a hyperlapse is to basically change perspective over time. So you, the camera, is actually going to be moving, whether that be in a semicircle or whether that be closer to or further away from the subject, which might be the mountains or your subject might be another person in front of the mountains, as I used in my example, that you also move toward or away from. So in a time lapse, the subject is going to stay in the exact same location every frame. But in your hyperlapse, your perspective is actually going to change each frame. So before you set up your equipment and start shooting a hyperlapse, we need to talk about the formula to calculate how many images you need to shoot. So first we need to talk about frame rate. So most films are shot at 24 frames per second and that is the example I'm going to be using for this. A good rule of thumb to go by is every one frame equals one image, which means that one second equals 24 images. So for this formula, I'm going to be doing 24 times however many seconds I want, and that's going to give me how many images I need to take. So if I want my hyperlapse to be 5 seconds long, I multiply that by 24, and I get 120 images. Most importantly, let's talk equipment. So all you really need is your camera or your phone. A tripod is nice, but not necessary. You can actually use a monopod to get some pretty great results as well. Here's an example I took just using my phone without a tripod or a monopod. It wasn't great, but it was pretty good, and here's why. You need some type of measuring tool. Now that doesn't mean you need a tape measure or a ruler, but if you're able to calculate a relatively equal distance between your shots, you're going to get much better results. A great way to do that is with your feet or the cracks in a sidewalk. You're also going to want to make sure that your camera or your phone has some type of a grid viewfinder. So perhaps the most important thing to shoot a hyperlapse is shot composition. It's pretty easy to take a couple hundred photos, but it's relatively hard to make sure that they're all composed in a way that you can line them up in post-production and make a nice smooth transition through time. And in order to do that, you're gonna use your camera's viewfinder and you're gonna use a grid. So the easiest way to compose your shots so that they look smooth throughout your hyperlapse is to line up part of your subject on one of these grid points and keep it lined up at the exact same point throughout your entire hyperlapse. So in my example, 
of the girl in front of the mountains, I lined her chin up, the bottom of her chin, with the upper right point in my grid throughout every photo. This makes it much easier for your software program, whether that be Final Cut or After Effects or Premiere or whatever you're using, to stabilize your shots. This is actually a bad example because the camera is not level with the subject. And it's important that your camera stay level on a flat surface if possible throughout your entire hyperlapse because once again, that's gonna make it much easier and much smoother in post-production to put all of your images together. So the rest of this video involves the post-production of your hyperlapse images. And this is just the way that I do it. I mean, there's like a million different software programs and ways to do this on your own, but I'm gonna be teaching you about the three ways that I do it, and that is Adobe Lightroom, Adobe After Effects, and Final Cut Pro 10. So when I'm shooting a hyperlapse, I'm shooting in RAW because it gives me more flexibility in post-production. And I'm using Lightroom because Lightroom makes it really easy to combine a series of images and sync them so they all have the same characteristics and settings. So I'm gonna import all my images into Lightroom and I'm going to develop my first image here. Maybe drop the highlights a little bit, boost the shadows, bring up the whites, tone down the blacks, increase the clarity, bring out the vibrance. And once I adjust all my settings, I can easily go to my ending image way over here, hold shift, and then just click on it, and it selects all of my images here, and then I can just hit this sync button. And that will synchronize all of the settings throughout all of my images, so they'll all look identical in terms of composition. Now, it's not always the best option to sync all of your images, because sometimes when you change perspective in a hyperlapse, you'll get different lighting. So what you can do is you can group together different photos and sync those. So for this particular hyperlapse, I synced three different groups of photos and gave them each a slightly different composition. Then all you need to do is make sure your photos are all selected, export them, and then they'll be ready to be brought into After Effects or Final Cut Pro or whatever other editing program you're using. So nine times out of 10, I use After Effects with hyperlapses because After Effects makes it really easy and has a really nice warp stabilizer to make your video look really smooth. All you gotta do is import your files and After Effects makes that really easy because all you gotta do is click on the first file in your folder and it will automatically bring all of your images into After Effects. So all you gotta do is drag this down to a new composition and it will automatically open up all of your images as a time lapse. So as I play through this, I notice that my hyperlapse isn't playing quite as smooth as I like. Well, After Effects makes this really easy. All you gotta do is open up Warp Stabilizer and drag that onto your hyperlapse. Most of the time, Warp Stabilizer does a really fantastic job of smoothing out your video by stabilizing, cropping, and auto-scaling your different images. Sometimes, however, it doesn't do such a great job. And there are ways to manually go in and change the different keyframes and positions of your images, but that's for another video. And like I said, it might not be perfect, so you're gonna have to play around with your different controls here and your smoothness and the type of warp and framing for your hyperlapse. And finally, Final Cut Pro 10. Okay, so Final Cut has a few more steps than Adobe After Effects and slightly worse stabilization software, but you can still get by with using it. So once you have all your images imported, you're gonna select them all and you're gonna drag them down to your timeline. Next, you're gonna change the duration for each one with them all selected and you're gonna type one and then enter on your keyboard. And this will make each image one frame. So before you apply any stabilization to this hyperlapse, you're actually going to have to export your timeline. So then I'm going to import that file and drag it into my timeline. If I play through this, it's not quite as smooth as I'd like. So all you gotta do is go over to your stabilization 
and choose your preferred stabilization method. I tend to use inertia cam, but in this particular instance, it poses a problem because it removes my subject from the field of view towards the end of the video. So I'm gonna leave it on automatic. And if I play through, it does a pretty good job. So the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that your hyperlapse fills up the full frame of your video. So click on transform, hold down shift and drag until your hyperlapse clip fills the entire frame. And if you find that while playing through, your hyperlapse isn't as fast or as slow as you'd like, you can always change the duration. Now here's a final tip with hyperlapses. Because they only last a few seconds long on average, a quick way to lengthen your hyperlapse video and make it look a little bit more interesting is to play it in reverse directly afterward. Doing so will double the length of your hyperlapse and can make it look a little bit more interesting.